First thing you're going to need is a ruler, scissors or rotary blade, fusible interfacing, and of course you need thread. Make sure your bobbin is fully wind. Um, you'll need scissors along with a button. Um, I like to have both scissors and rotary blade readily available, readily available. but um, once you have all those things, you should be good to go. Lay your fabric down. I have it folded so that I can just do one mass cut. The length, always make sure is going um, parallel to the salvage and your waist would be going across. Now, if there's a certain pattern and you want to, you know, switch up the pattern, then by all means, go ahead and um, put it at an angle or whatever. But the width of the material should be wider than your hips. The whole point of a gathered skirt is to pull a bigger material into a smaller space so that it could fit nice and even. So um, the reference mark should be your hips. But I went ahead and I just used the full width of the fabric, which I believe was 54 inches. So it'll be 54 inches in the front and 54 inches in the back. Once you have your length, the next thing you would need is the waist measurement for the width. Now, the 54 inches front and back will be gathered to my waist measurement, which is 30 inches. Um, but right now, that doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start sewing our closure. In order for you to sew down your zipper, you have to mark where you would like to add the zipper stopper. So that should be a half an inch above your actual stopper on the zipper. So just lay your zipper down on top and measure where that stopping point would be. Add a notch to showcase where you are going to stop your basting stitch. Now, when you're sewing the body of the zipper, it should be a basting stitch at five millimeters, five mm. And then from there, you can switch the machine so that it changes the length of the stitch to 2.5. Be sure to back stitch though because that's going to be a pressure point for the zipper. When you switch it over, you're going to switch it to a regular stitch which is 2.5 and sew all the way down to the hem. Now that that's done, go ahead and sew the seam for the opposite side and be sure to treat your edges. So whatever you're going to do, whether it is serging or doing the zigzag stitch over the edge, be sure to do that. Now I am going to serge one side closed and the other side will be open. The side where we're putting the zipper, it has to be serged open. I can sit beside you while you're going on. Now that that's done, it should look a little something like this. You'll have a huge loop. If you want to iron, go ahead and do so. I like to iron my seams, make sure everything is nice and flat and smooth. And now you're ready to add the zipper. If there's anything that you need to trim off, always make sure you do so while you're, you know, handling the garment because you don't want to have a ton of threads left over that needs to be clipped off. I mean, it drives me crazy. But to each his own. If you want to do that all together at the end, then by all means, do your thing, boo boo. You are conversation takes to pay in its some interest from now we are going to add that zipper. The original notch that I made, it faded away. So now I have to mark it again. Um, but if your notch is there, then definitely by all means just continue. Um, once you add your marking and you make sure that it's lining up to where it was originally, go ahead and use some pins to stabilize your, your zipper. Uh, the pins are only going to be attached to the seam allowance. So flip your zipper so that um, the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the seam allowance. Make sure that it is centered in the middle. Now, if you want, you can base stitch it by hand just so that it'll stay in place. But me, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to use these pins and pin it down. Okay. As you can see, the pins aren't through and through the fabric. They're simply going through the seam allowance. Make sure to change your presser foot to your actual zipper foot. 
you're gonna add some anchoring stitches just so that the zipper will stay in place and it's secured onto the actual seam allowance now a lot of people well sometimes people don't add these anchoring stitches and if the zipper rips from the fabric then it completely rips off but if you have a secondary uh, anchoring stitch then it's more stable and it's more secure and if something happens where one stitch pops at least you have that second dairy you know anchoring stitch to keep it in place once you're done with your anchoring stitch you are going to do a full perimeter stitch to sew all the way around the zipper for the perimeter stitch make sure that you lay your zipper flat open up your material this time you're going to be sewing from the right side of the fabric so lay it down flat and you're going to start from the very top of the zipper smooth out your fabric and if you need to slightly open the basting stitch slightly just so that you can move that zipper head out of the way by all means do so just be very careful but with using the zipper foot it should allow you to have enough spacing so that you can sew right along the edge of the zipper head around to the bottom of the zipper make sure that you pass your stopping point and you're not crisscrossing over the actual zipper teeth and you're going beyond the zipper stopping point and then you pivot around back to the top of the zipper Using your seam ripper, go ahead and remove the basting stitch that was created over the body of the zipper. Be very careful so that you don't rip your material. You can use the edge of the seam ripper to slightly push on the side of the fabric just so that it'll open up. Just be very, very careful. I would hate for you to make a hole in your oh your dress or your skirt or whatever you're making you know from lack of patience so take your time if you are done be sure to test your zipper make sure that it's working it's functional open and close it a few times um, when you get to your stopper don't like push it beyond its point otherwise you can stress out that seam so just be very gentle maybe you're not different all right, you guys, so we are almost done. Before we go ahead, we do the hem. Double check that the fabric and everything is facing the right direction. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hem. I like to iron out my hem instead of just putting the pins and um, sewing with just the pins. If I iron it, I know that it'll stay in place. My creases will already be um, in place and everything will come out smooth exactly how I want it. So, um, go ahead and fold over twice your seam allowance i believe i did a quarter a quarter fold over iron and from there you should be ready to sew you're all alone hold up hold up baby i can sit beside here is a quick tip that i forgot to mention be sure to trim your seam allowance if you've already ironed then you'll already have your creases there and you'll see how far to trim off the reason to why we're trimming is so that your hem will lay down nice and flat now as you are laying your seam allowance into place be sure to fold or mold your waistline seam allowance towards that same side what I mean is if the bottom at the hem the seam allowance is folded towards the right side then at the top it also needs to be folded towards the right side if the seam allowance is open then of course at the top you want it to be open just so that when you're ironing nothing is crisscrossing over and looking kind of funky this is the difference of what it looks like before and after as you can see it's very bulky if you do not trim it 
All right, you guys, let's do some basic math. Just like we took the measurements from before, we're gonna use them again. This time we're focusing on the waist. So my waist here, I wrote 30.5. Um, I have lost some weight. Um, be sure to write your waist down. The amount of seams that you have, you do have two seams. So for each front and back, you'll need a half an inch. Therefore, the seam altogether, you would need two inches added to that. Your overlap, which is your extension, would be one inch. In total, my measurement for the overall length of my waistband would be 33.5. This little illustration here shows how it would look. So you'd have 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for the seam allowance. And then you'll have one of them where the extension is going to be, um, needs to be a little bit longer. So I went ahead and I took it off of the original backing. Um, but ideally, you would want the backing to be slightly longer than the front. It needs to be longer because uh, you'll need an extension for that button to sit on. Now that you have your measuring lengths for the waistband, the front and the back, go ahead and take out your fabric and measure how wide you want that waistband to be. I settled with one and a half inches. Multiply that by two because it's gonna be folded. That gives you three. You also have to add the half an inch seam allowance for the front and the back. So half and half makes one plus three equals four. The width of your waistband for the front and the back will be four inches. Now that you have your waistband cut and fused to the interfacing, fold it in half, iron it down so that you can have your creases. Also, add in your creases for your seam allowance. What you're gonna do is fold the front waistband in half so that you can actually have the center front marking. Add your mark, whether it is with a marker or um, you can add a notch like I did here, it's triangular. Um, but with these markings, you're gonna transfer them onto the center back. Uh, marking of the center front will give you the marking of the center back. Now remember, the center back should be an inch longer because you will have an extension, the overlap, which is where you will add your, your button. Once the markings on the waistband is complete, you will do the same for the markings on the body of the skirt. Sew your side seam for the waistband together. Once it's sewn, be sure to trim the seam allowance just so that it can lay flat. If you have already ironed, once you trim off the edges, you should be able to press that seam open just so that it sets back into place. If there's anything that you'd like to add to the waistband, right now would be the best time to do so. We are going to add a label. I am going to add a label. <laughs> I'm also going to add belt hoops, which I thought would be necessary since um, I like to wear belts with just about everything. Why not, right? Once you are done with their waistband, you are ready to gather the body of the skirt. I've already showed you guys how to gather, therefore I did not show the full process on here. The next step would be attaching the body of the skirt to the waistband. Match up your seams first and then you can match up the center front. Add as many pins as needed to secure the body to the waistband. It will take some time and it takes a few maneuvering, that way you can get everything nice and smooth. But just be sure that your gathers are even between the front and the back. And from there, you're ready to sew all around. This is what it's looking like so far. Amazing. Uh, the next thing we will do is close out the very ends, the end of the waistband. Fold it in half so that it's going 
of course on the wrong side make sure that your seam allowance is matching up and you're gonna start right above where the zipper is rotate your material around so that you're going in the proper direction of course be sure to back stitch because that's gonna be a pressure point where it may rip out but sew across pivot sinking your needle so that you keep that same seam allowance and then bring it back up be sure to trim that edge so that when you turn it inside out it's nice and smooth and you don't have any bulking towards the corner at this point you are ready to top stitch you're gonna top stitch the seam allowance to the waistband you can start right where the zipper is or you can start um, closer towards the edge if you do start closer towards the edge it's a little bit harder because you have to maneuver the other side away from it go ahead and top stitch all the way across make sure that you are keeping your belt hoops nice and even sometimes with the pressure of the presser foot they tend to move forward and start leaning out of um, out of alignment to where they are supposed to be just like we did with the other side you're gonna fold the very edge of the waistband and zip it straight across just so that we can close it and then from there you can trim the corner so that it lays nice and smooth if you didn't have any belt hoops attached to the waistband once you've turned it inside out you are ready to go ahead and close it so grab your needle and thread and we're gonna do a ladder stitch slash blind stitch so that we can close this waistband but if you did add belt hoops then this part you will have to actually stitch across the top of the belt hoop just to secure it in place oh, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. all right this wraps it up to blind stitch the waistband you'll just need a, ne a needle and thread um, always make sure you start from the inside so that the knot that's at the end of the thread can be tucked in and you're gonna go through each side almost as if you are creating a ladder I'm sure you guys have seen those little snippets on videos I mean on TikTok on how uh, people just make quick little hacks and putting things together if it's like torn at the seam but it would be the same concept you just make you insert the needle from side to side and as you do that the thread that's in between creates a ladder now it can get extremely tough for you to do because it's a lot of material that you are going through um, this is why we use a, a thimble <laughs> but I'm not using one I just like to you know sit back take my time and make sure that um, I don't stab myself Every now and then I still do, but use yourself a, th a thimble and make sure that, you know, you don't get hurt during the process. I like to put on a movie and, you know, take my time with this because it is something that is lengthy and it takes time for you to complete. But once it's done, it's nice and crisp. The front looks clean. Um, if you don't want to do any hand sewing, another option would be to top stitch the waistband together or to just stitch it straight across. Uh, that takes a little bit more effort because you have to make sure that everything is even on both sides. I don't like to do that because oftentimes they does, it doesn't come out even for me, but if you're able to do it, by all means, again, do your thing, boo-boo. <laughs> this wraps up the video for today. Um, oh, as far as the closure, I did not add the button. I ended up changing my mind and adding a few snaps, and I called it a day because I was getting tired of the skirt. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, I'll show you a video later on this week on how to put a button together. Uh, the sewing machine I have is a brother and um, I'll post it up on Thursday. Anyway, I will see you next time. If you have not subscribed to the channel, definitely do so. Like, comment down below if you have any questions at all. If you have any suggestions on uh, things that you'd like to see, send me a message on Instagram. And uh, I'm pretty quick on responding right away. But uh, until next time, I'll see you Thursday. Love you guys. Thank you for coming back and watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.